ಭಕ್ತಾನುಕಂಪ ಭಕ್ತಾಕಂಪಾತ್ರಿತ ವಿಗ್ರಹಂಗೈಷಾವತಾರಮೇಶಮಿಡ್ಯಂಗ್ ತಾರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಂಗ್ ಶಿರಸ ನಮಾಂ we pay our respects to shri ramakrishna we bow down to him who is without any sin or impurity who is eternal who is of the nature of infinity who has taken the human form out of his grace for the his devotees the supreme incarnation the supreme lord of the universe may he bless us all shri ramakrishna and his message that is the subject for talk what we understand by the word shri ramakrishna and his message the him that i chanted showed him as having taken a human form to shower his grace on the devotees out of his mercy for the devotees to show them the way to the goal of blessedness now that is the him introduces the subject as such ramakrishna is now more or less familiar with the devotees they know his life story i need not go into the details about it except to mention that his whole life is a message everything that sri ramakrishna did everything that happened in his life is to show the way to the world to reach the state of blessedness that we are all seeking we are all seeking that goal which will take us away from this miseries of this world the series of births and deaths as believed by those who have the faith that human soul is born again and again to work out his salvation to free himself from the miseries of continuing this kind of limited existence sri ram krishna showed the way that have been mentioned that the ways that have been mentioned by the scriptures of all religions and then what was the need of god incarnating himself again and again the reason is this that the teachings of the scriptures 
becomes gradually forgotten due to our tendencies towards the existence of the duality towards the life of the senses because of that our vision becomes hazy we do not clearly understand the teachings of the scriptures or the lives of the various incarnations that time and again appeared in this world to make my people aware of their goal in life which is god realization or realization of the true nature of humanity we are all human beings born with outgoing tendencies as the scripture says our senses go towards the external world but never tries to turn inward and see the inner soul which is god himself that is the curse that we have and to make us again turn godward god has to appear again and again as human beings to show us the way to learn how to turn our gaze inward and remember the goal that we are seeking though often unconsciously and fumbling our way for our way in the wrong direction because the direction that we are familiar with is outgoing going away from the self now that has to be that direction has to be changed and it requires the presence of a personality that is by himself in drawn and by his practice in life he shows the way how we have to turn our gaze inward and seek the, our relations that essence which is our birthright which we cannot do without and yet which we have missed as it were this is the misfortune that has fallen on every one of us so occasionally the great luminaries appear recently say about 100 years ago that we found ourselves too much and gross with the things of the world great skepticism had taken hold of the humanity we learned many things about the external world but we became gradually unconcerned about our inner self and then came in the picture sri ram krishna to show us the way on the other direction ram krishna as you know was born in a village which was absolutely unsophisticated though it was not far from the then capital of india i mean calcutta which had come in close contact with the western way of thinking and the eastern usual eastern way also had been mostly forgotten 
religion consisted in certain rituals which became gradually lifeless and irrelevant for our spiritual growth. Men became skeptical. They forgot that old faith that pers- that kept people alive about their origin and their goal. The result was we had been fumbling about. Sri Ramakrishna came from the very birth. He was completely innocent of the education that prevailed in those days, which was merely a means for earning one's livelihood. But it did not give us the knowledge of knowing ourselves or freeing ourselves from the worldliness that had taken possession of us. Sri Ramakrishna from his very birth was constantly conscious of man's own goal in life, namely God-realization, which was the teaching of his life and which he often insisted on whenever there was any occasion for it. He declared that man's one goal in life is God-realization. That is the first goal that has to be first taken care of. Everything else is only secondary. Repeatedly he mentioned this. He said, Verily I tell you that I have no other knowledge. I do not want anything else. Do not know anything else except God. His one concern in life was that God realization and he was deeply immersed in it. How that realization is to be had, he showed by his own life that it was not by pursuing any kind of ritualistic religion, not by simply having some faith in one dogma or another, but in having great yearning for a reunion with God, from whom we came, in whom we live and have our being, and who is the ultimate goal to which we should return in course of time. Now how to return to that divine existence of ours, that is what he has shown. One thing that we know from his life is that strong yearning for God, yearning which he has compared with uh, that of a little child for its mother, that sort of yearning which did not make anything else agreeable to us, did not leave in our mind anything except that God-realization, the hankering for Him, and knowing Him personally, realizing Him as our own, not merely as a matter of faith, but as having complete union with him, being one with the reality. That was Sri Ramakrishna's message in his life, in a word. He followed his own promptings of the heart in the beginning, and with that alone, without following systematically any kind of religious practice, he had that realization first. 
and after that only his practice of the then existent spiritual ways followed sri ram krishna used to say that ordinarily there will be flowers first and then fruits but in the case of great incarnations fruits come first and then flowers that's the reverse so the realization comes first and the methods for realization follow only that is what happened in the case of sri ram krishna that we find from his life story his life story is like a beautiful enchanting story of a man's quest for the lost horizon for the lost ideal that he has forgotten as it were sri ram krishna experienced that that was his birthright that was the beginning with which he started his life in as a little boy of five or six he had that vision and then gradually as he grew the vision came to him often and when after adolescence when that vision was completely overwhelmed him overwhelmed by that light as he said in that experience he mentioned like this waves of light came wave after wave and drowned him in that light that light is not the material light the light that was spiritual the light that was ever conscious not that light it is material and from that his life of spiritual practice started he went through different systematic processes of god realization as recorded in the scriptures among the hindus and after that he was not satisfied with that alone he had the final experience there but wanted to know how other people of other faiths reach their goal so he started other methods christianity islam and other existent systems he followed and realized at the end that all these systems all these precious teachings of the scriptures lead one, one to that one ultimate goal union with god becoming one with him that is the realization he had and then after that he found after remaining absorbed in that ecstatic condition continuously for 6 months the realization came as a command from above as it were from his inner voice that yours is not merely to be kept to be remain absorbed in god realization but you have come to share that knowledge with others the suffering humanity who are ignorant of that great truth need that message to be retold and that the scriptures will have to be made alive as it were by the man of knowledge the illumined soul and sri ramakrishna was born with that end that was the command that he said the command is from within is from himself who had incarnated for the purpose and his ministration began among the people who came to seek knowledge from him various people from various communities had come to him and they were blessed by 
the holy company of Sri Ramakrishna, who not only taught with words, but enthused them with his life. From him spirituality was just diffused that emanated and filled people. When he talked, his teachings came from the core of the heart, which immediately enlightened people. That is how the message started. In a nutshell, what his message was, that has to be just gone through summarily. In a, in a word it is God-realization, and he declared there are, as God is infinite, the ways of reaching him are also infinite. Various are the ways. What is needed is one's wholehearted devotion and strong yearning for reaching him, irrespective of the path that he may be following. And therefore, from his own experience, he discovered this for the saving of the humanity who are now being completely bewildered by the variety of ideas and by the inclinations of the whole world to just go divide themselves into groups and never thinking of coming closer and having respect for one another so that they may all be living in harmony and always helping one another to reach their destination with his God. Sri Ramakrishna's message in a nutshell is like this. He said, you have burning faith in your own system that you are following, without which you cannot make any progress, but at the same time, as regards other people following different paths, you should have a sort of respect for them, as if they are all fellow travelers, all going towards one destination, namely God. Now that sort of feeling, that sort of mutual respect is absolutely necessary, Sri Ramakrishna said, because unless and until you have realized your own faith, it is merely a sort of dogma for you. You cannot be sure of that also. How dare you speak about other faiths, criticizing them as if we have experienced all this past. That was his word of caution to everybody who had any kind of narrowness. We are like the frogs in the well, we are familiar with a frog who has been in a well, knew only the well and its limitations. He had no idea about the vast expanses of the ocean. In the same way, we are limited within our little ego and we have no experience of the vast ocean which is God. The divinity is unlimitable. The divinity cannot be fathomed and brought within a limited experience. So we must have faith not only in our own system, but in the systems of all. He said, if your heart is more sympathetic, you should feel that everybody is approaching God through his own uh, way of thinking, which may be his way of from, taught from the birth, or which he has followed according to his inclination. But others are also following the same thing, though in different ways. 
as there are different paths, therefore the goal appears to be different to them. But in reality, as Sri Ramakrishna himself has experienced in his life, the goal is one. That is the firm ground of his experience, direct experience, that he could tell the world that we all go to the same goal. Provided we are in earnest, even if there be any mistake anywhere, does not omniscient God know where we are making mistake, and will he not set us right if we are really sincere and honest? So never mind, criticize, don't try to criticize another, because one thing is there that you do not know them. You do not know the different ways, you have not tested them, so you have no right to pass any judgment on them. At the most you can say, I do not understand the other paths, but I am firmly convinced about my path and about other paths, at the most you can suspend judgment. But better than that, if we take the experience of Sri Ramakrishna, if we learn from his life, we can say we are all following the same path. We are all going towards the same goal, which is God, maybe in different ways. He gave the illustration of a, a water pool from where people drew water and were satisfied they could satisfy their thirst from the same water drawn from different uh, places, different hearts. But then the stuff is the same, though they may call it by different names. The ideal, the essence, the reality is the same. That is the central theme of Ramakrishna. The harmony of religions does not mean that all religions will have to be clubbed together and they will have to be brought into one system, just clipping off the other disagreeing points, not that way. But we must have sympathy, abiding sympathy for all the paths and then if we are earnest, we are sure to reach the goal without any without any hesitation, the goal will be ours. And that goal is our, our, our seeking, we want to have that goal, maybe according to the temperament that we have. As regards many, uh, see, many aspects of God, Sri Ramakrishna said, the truth has got many facets and it can be experienced through different angles, which may appear differently. But as we go nearer, we come closer to one another. And when we reach the goal, we are one with him. There is no difference whatsoever there. That is Sri Ramakrishna's great, great emphasis. And another emphasis that he also gave is this, that if God is one, as he is. And if we are all children of God, or if God dwells in every one of us, then there can be no discrimination between man and man, between group and group, community and community, or nation and nation. We are all integrated in that one truth which pervades everywhere. God pervades everything, all humanity, or even all existence. This has to be clearly remembered, and we must emphasize on that point only. Otherwise, there will be dissension and division. However much we may be trying to come together, and uh, however much we may make truce with one another and try to live peacefully, unless we realize that existence is one, truth is one, 
we are all expressions of the same truth until we realize that there cannot be abiding peace and without that truth the dissension the quarrel the differences we will have to will continue without any say letting without any kind of change of atmosphere this is going on we have tried various ways we have seen we have tried to live together peacefully but the inner man is selfish so long as the selfishness continues so long as this idea of limitation continues i remain one unit others remain different units and their clashes are inevitable so one way of bringing all humanity together is the god consciousness which is all pervading the same reality everywhere in scriptures in the vedas we hear that god is one truth is one people call him by different names ekam sat vipra bodha vadanti one truth is being treated talked of being taught by different people in different languages different ways but the differences in language do not create difference in the truth itself that is the great message of sri ramakrishna he believes that all humanity should be gathered together in the idea that god exists everywhere god is all pervading permeating every one of us he dwells in us not only that he is the one existence which appears as even as living and non living there is no difference between matter and spirit also both are expressions of the same truth that has shown the world in diverse forms now that is the teaching of sri ramakrishna which has got to be remembered he did not mean a sort of god realization or living in god which makes him exclusive makes him indifferent towards the environment towards others no he believed in that sort of religion which will make people feel all one in god and therefore there should be complete union and complete fellow feeling sri ramakrishna's life showed that experience of oneness in a in a wonderful way as is illustrated by his life incident once when in the the river ganga on which the dakshineshwar temple is situated there in in a boat two boatmen had been quarreling and he saw from the distance that one man slapped the other and sri ramakrishna felt so deeply his union with the whole world that the boatmen's slapping left a mark on his back that mark was visible it continued for some days now that is how the experience of oneness he had another instance is there when somebody walked on green grass with shoes sri ramakrishna felt as if the pain was on his heart on his chest there are marks of that footprint on the chest he felt so much union with the in the nan the unconscious world as it is the people not only human beings but all beings and even uh, the stocks and stones grass and other things so that is the unity that sri ramakrishna felt and that unity is the message of sri ramakrishna it is not merely a sort of intellectual conclusion not merely a sort of social feeling 
but the feeling of oneness, mind you, that is different from social feeling. From sympathy that we have towards one another, that is one thing. But it is the experience of oneness that is the goal of human being. All religions will gradually take us to that. We live, move and have our being in God, we say. But we are the same divinity and these different individuals are but manifestations of that one divinity. In the Vedas, they say the duality is only an illusion, that we are many, we are different from one another. It is merely a sort of illusion. The reality is that we alone are in existence and the plurality is merely a imagination. Real essence is one God in existence and there cannot be any kind of division in that oneness because if one thing is unlimited, there cannot be any difference in that, like the sky which is spread everywhere, as we call ether. Ether spreads everywhere and it cannot be divided. Akasha or space cannot be divided into different segments because that by which we divide the space is also permeated by the space. So divinity is all pervading and therefore there cannot be any division in it. So human beings are divided because of their ignorance about their essence. We all feel different because we do not remember that we are all parts and parcels, so-called parts and parcels of God. God is indivisible and we are permeated by that indivisible reality. That is the teaching of Sri Ramakrishna in brief. We have to remember that, the teaching, the salient points of the teaching. And Sri Ramakrishna had infinite sympathy for all kinds of people, though he insisted that for spiritual life what is absolutely necessary is renunciation. That renunciation did not mean, in his words, he did not mean that renunciation means we shall leave our hearth and home and become monks. He never said that. Wherever we may be, we must renounce the ego, our selfishness, our feeling of narrowness, which, is, which creates differences in our mind. That is what is called renunciation, which does not feel for the ego. Complete elimination of the ego, so that there can be no narrowness. There is no scope of narrowness in anybody, because we are all one. If one is hurt, I am hurt. If one is happy, I am happy. So it will be the code of conduct that we cannot harm another. If we harm another, we harm ourselves. If we make others happy, we make ourselves happy. Now that essence that we are all, sarvam khaluidam brahma, all this is brahman, the all-pervading reality. That is the central teaching of all the scriptures and that has to be particularly emphasized in our life so that our life will be more sympathetic towards all and our progress towards that one entity will be smoother if we follow this conviction, if we proceed with this conviction. That conviction came from Sri Ramakrishna's experience and he taught this to all of us. That is why his message is so very relevant in this world of dissension today. His message brings religion, brings new life to religion, makes religion more effective 
not only for our code of conduct, but for our very essence, very existence as it were. In every field it will find expression and it will make us nobler and more sympathetic towards all. That is the teaching of Sri Ramakrishna. As Swami Vivekananda said, following the footprints of his master, that we can never, we should never impose our personality on anybody, but must be sympathetic towards all and try our utmost to help everybody follow according to his, follow his own path and progress according to his own inclination as Sri Ramakrishna emphasized again and again. Even good ideas should be just... Uh, uh, examples should be put before others, but never it should be imposed upon another, because as in the Bible it is said, you clear your own eyes, you are trying to remove the straw from your neighbor's eye, while you have got a beam covering your eyes. So we have to make ourselves pure so that we understand what is good for us, then only we can really do good to others. Doing good to others means that showing them the way by means of which they can permanently solve all their problems. And God realization Oneness with the divinity is the only goal which will solve our, our problems. That is the message of Sri Ramakrishna. I pray to him that through his grace we all learn that, sort, that oneness. We live all in God and have burning faith in him so that our life's purpose will be God-realization, feeling one with the divinity, which will be the instrument for bringing eternal peace to the whole humanity. May we all be blessed by Him. As it is said in the scriptures, Badrang karne bhi srinuyama deva, Badrang pashe maksha bhi riyatra, Sthirai ranga istushtu aungsastanavi, Vyasema deva itanja dayu. May we have, may we see good everywhere, may we Badrang Pashe, Badrang Srinami, may we hear all good things, may we hear all, see all good sights. May our life be dedicated to the worship of God. Uh, as long as we live, our whole life may be dedicated to the service of God. That is the prayer that we are in the Vedas uh, is taught to all of us. So may our life be for the service of all. May the oneness of divinity be realized by every one of us so that our life's problems will come forever. Peace eternal will be our experience in this life as well as at the end of this life. Thank you.